Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be telling you 10 things that I wish I knew in my early 20s that would have just changed my perspective on so many things that I've done. I'm just going to hop right into the video because I feel like whenever I click on a video and there's too much talking, I'm like, let's get to the meat and potatoes. So let's go. Find what you're good at and get really good at it. I know this might sound a little obvious, but if you're in college and you're good at something, focus on what you're good at and make that your entire existence. What I've learned in my late 20s is that the thing that I love might not necessarily be the thing that I'm good at. So whenever people tell you and say like, hey, if you have a hobby, like maybe you can make it your side hustle and that's gonna make you money one day, maybe one day it will, but the first thing that's gonna make you the most money the quickest is what you're good at. So find what you're good at and really just invest your time and effort into it because that might be the thing that's gonna make you successful and then you're gonna be able to use that success to be able to invest in your side hustle or your hobby or whatever you actually love doing. And that's the beauty of it because we're fed this lie that you're gonna use Use what you love to be able to create income and that's not the case for so many people so many people don't have the luxury of being able to do what they love to make income so find what you're good at invest in that make that your income whether it's really good at reading and studying so that maybe you should be a lawyer or a doctor because those take an incredible amount of studying and reading or maybe you're really good at math like maybe do something in accounting I don't know because I'm not you but find whatever you're good at and like really invest your time to get better at it because that can potentially make you the money that you're looking for in your future number two give yourself a timeline and stick to it Whenever you're doing something in life, just know that time is gonna pass regardless. Whether you're doing something or whether you're not doing something, that is something my dad always told me is you're gonna waste time if you just sit around thinking about doing something and never actually get to it because you feel like you have endless years. In my early 20s, I thought I had all the time in the world. And it may seem like that, you know, you're 21, you're 22, you're just having a good time, you're not worrying about anything. You should definitely enjoy your early 20s, but also give yourself a timeline. If you know that you wanna accomplish something, putting something on a calendar actually gives you the motivation to go forward and do that thing. What I've learned even recently is I give myself a timeline for everything. So whether it's starting a podcast, if you want to be a content creator, give yourself a timeline and have a buy when date and it's going to give you the motivation to actually stick to it. So if you're someone who wants to go to school and graduate and take a year abroad and maybe do an internship, give yourself a timeline for when I'm going to apply to internships, when I'm going to go to the internship, when I want to be done with the internship, where I want to travel, when I want to travel by. Give yourself a timeline. So many times if you don't actually give yourself a buy when date you're gonna keep pushing it off pushing it off pushing it off and before you know it a year is gonna have passed and you wouldn't have done anything but whatever it is that you're studying for whatever it is that you want to go towards or whatever it is that you want to learn whether it's a skill set whether it's going back to school just know that six months is gonna pass whether you're doing it or not I think that's super helpful number three waiting for validation might hinder you getting where you want to be in life or starting something that you want to start in life now hear me out validation is important in some forms whether it's finding those people to support you a community to be able to connect with that kind of validation is great however waiting for someone to approve your idea to give you the okay to start something might hinder you from actually starting that thing I'll give an example if you have a creative concept that you want to start maybe it's a podcast or maybe it's a series or maybe you're an artist and there's some kind of visual art that you want to create and you're waiting for other people to like it before you really dive into it and continue to do that don't do that. Understand that not everybody is going to see your vision and people can only see things that you do through the lens of their own life. So start things before other people approve of them. As long as it's positive. Don't do anything that's going to be harmful or hurtful to anyone. Don't wait for people to say, yes, I approve before you start things. Number four, this has to do with dating. Men will only give you what you tolerate. What do I mean by this? I mean that when it comes to dating, what you tolerate sets the bar for how a man is going to treat you. If you're allowing a man to come into your life, but he's not taking you on dates, he's not texting you back, he's not calling you, he's not doing things when he says he's gonna do them, yet you still allow him to be in your presence, that man is gonna continue to treat you the same way. He's not gonna change 90% of the time. So just be really careful about what you tolerate with men because you're giving them a blueprint for how to treat you. This is another thing that I learned, is when a man asks you what you look for in a man or a man is asking you what you want from a man, be careful exactly what you tell them because that allows them the ability to dress up exactly what you said and do that for the beginning parts of their relationship until they get what they want. Be careful in those senses. Do not let men treat you 
the way you don't want to be treated and they won't treat you the way you don't want to be treated. It's actually very simple and I don't know why it took me so long to understand this, but you can't let a man raise his voice at you. You can't let a man treat you wrong and then expect them to turn around and want to do it because you've already allowed it. What you allow, a man will do, period. Also to elaborate on this is that closed mouths do not get fed. Not all men know exactly what you want. So if you want something from someone, whether you're dating, whether you're getting to know them, you have to communicate those wants. Closed mouths are not gonna get fed. If a man doesn't know that you like to be loved in X way, he can't give you that love. If a man doesn't know that you like flowers, whether it might be obvious to some men or not, you might have to communicate in some way. I really love when you send me flowers. I really love when you make me feel like X, Y, Z. And that way they can make a mental note in their head to continue treating you like that. If you love gifts, I really love when you show up and you have X, Y, Z, or I really love when you're thoughtful. You have to sometimes communicate these things to men because not every man is gonna be perfect and not every man's center of his world is gonna be you. Especially if you find like a very successful man who is centered around his work, he might not always know exactly how to court a woman in the way that you wanna be courted. He might want know how to court a woman based on his past. It's not a bad thing to be able to communicate to a man how you want to be treated as long as he is respecting you and it's something in addition to what you already like about him. Number five, respecting yourself in relationships can be a very lonely road. Let me, let me explain. If you have a high self-respect, that's gonna make your dating pool incredibly small because a lot of people don't have self-respect. So if you're not allowing men to just flippantly come in and out of your life because you're looking for that certain thing and you're looking for a certain amount of treatment, just know that your road is gonna be that much longer and just know that it's gonna be that much lonelier because you're dating the one or two percent of people out there who are disciplined, who were brought up in a household to treat women with respect or treat you a certain way or men who are intentionally dating. Men and women intentionally dating, there's not a whole lot of people out here who are doing that anymore. So if you're intentionally dating and you're looking for a man who's also intentionally dating, it's gonna take you a while because you're gonna have to find the right person who's in the right place in their life that matches with you and all the attributes that you're looking for. So don't get frustrated on this journey. Just know that it's gonna take more time and it's okay because not everyone can afford a Lamborghini. If you're that Lamborghini, there's only a very small select amount of people who are gonna be purchasing Lamborghinis. So it might take a lot longer to purchase a Lamborghini because it requires a lot more than it is to buy a Honda. More people can afford a Honda, so you're gonna have more people coming into the Honda dealership. Just think of yourself as that Lamborghini or that Ferrari. You are a rarity, so it's okay. It's gonna take time. You're not unlovable. You're very much lovable. Number six, lean into your fears because on the other side of your fears is actually your destiny. This one is so beautiful and I recently learned this one. Leaning into what you're scared of. Whatever you fear right now, whether it is starting a YouTube channel, whether it's like for me, I'll give an example. I fear small talk. I don't like small talk. I feel like it's not not really a great way to connect with people but small talk can lead to conversations that take you to deeper meaningful relationships and you will never know unless you have small talk so on the other side of my small talk could be a relationship with someone that's gonna help me get somewhere in life or that's gonna be a beautiful friendship or it's gonna be XYZ so on the other side of your fear could be something so beautiful and you really have to lean into it the example that I heard recently was a girl who sang she's really great at singing and when people would ask her to sing in front of them that was her biggest fear she did not want to sing in front of them but she forced herself to because because on the other side of that fear of singing was actually what she ended up doing as a career because everyone around her was like, you're an amazing singer and it opened so many doors for her and led her down a road where she's actually able to be an artist. On the other side of your fears, whatever you're pushing off is actually your destiny. So think about what your fears are, whatever you might fear or whatever you're scared of right now, force yourself to do it or come to terms with yourself and find a way to be able to do it in some way because on the other side of that fear is actually something so beautiful and it's gonna help you answer a lot of questions on your journey. If you watched my previous video, I had a fear of being a content creator full time because it's a very up and down industry. However, I am forcing myself and pushing myself to just really lean into that fear. Why am I so scared? Do I not trust in the kind of content that I'm making? Do I not believe in myself? Do I not think that I'm marketable? Do I not think that I'm just as good as Monet McMichael or Alex Earl or all these really big creators? What are those fears and where do they come from? I think it's a really great way to self-reflect and look inward and think, wow, why did I fear that? Or why did I not think that I was good enough to do that? It's fun, it's like a little game. On the other side of your fears could be your destiny. So beautiful.
Number seven, you cannot miss what is meant for you. Okay, this goes up to God because God already knows your plan. He already knows what's set for you. So if you're hung up on something that you feel like you missed out on, or maybe you couldn't be in a certain place, you have to rewrite that story and understand that, oh, if it was actually meant for me, there's no way that I could miss it. Or maybe there's a way that it's gonna come back around in the future and you don't know because it's not your job to know, it's God's job to know. If you didn't get the job that you wanted, if you didn't get the person that you were dating that you wanted, there's a reason because maybe the next person that you're gonna date is actually even better. Maybe that job is gonna stop you from doing something else that's actually gonna lead you to success or lead you to happiness. You need to understand that anything that you miss was never meant for you. So don't get hung up on it. Don't sit there and think, oh, this is the worst thing that could ever happen to me because there is a literal reason for everything. I'm actually shocked if there's people out there who don't believe in that, that for some reason they miss out on something and they think, well, that's it. Now my life sucks because I missed out on this one thing. That would shock me if there's actually people out there who believe that. You have to understand that rejection is redirection. For every closed door, there's another open door for you and it's a door that maybe you couldn't even imagine being open for you. So next time that you don't get something that you want, literally remind yourself that there's no way that that was missed out if that was meant for me. There's no way that I missed out on that if that was meant for me, truly. That leads me into my next one, number eight. Life is all about the pivot. This is just a, a piggyback on what I was talking about. Life is all about the pivots. Whenever you don't get something that you want, how do you pivot? You can't throw a temper tantrum because that's not gonna lead you anywhere. So life is all about overcoming the challenges. Life is literally just a series of challenges that you're overcoming. From the time that you were young, the challenge of walking, the challenge of crawling, to walking, to standing, to being able to read. There's so many challenges in life that we're overcoming and anytime that you can't overcome something, how are you pivoting? Because pivoting is the only way that you're gonna continue to move forward in life. Think about these closed doors that I was talking about. If a door is closed, how are you pivoting? Where is it pushing you to? How are you learning from the thing that you lost? In relationships, when a relationship doesn't work and two people leave each other, there's always someone that's bitter and there's always someone who takes a lesson away. Life is about the pivot. If you don't end up with the person that you thought you were gonna end up with, how did you pivot? What did you learn from that relationship and how are you gonna do better in the next? Making every situation that you go through a learning lesson. So that way you're never bitter, you're never hung up and you're not living in the past. You cannot live life in the past. You need to pivot so that you can continue to move forward. Number nine, happiness is not a destination. It's not a person, it's not a place. It is a state of mind. Let that really sink in. Happiness is a state of mind. There's so many times that we put emphasis, we put on weight. I'm not gonna be happy until, oh, I'll be happy when. All of these things are just hindering our actual happiness. Will Smith recently just said, you can have all the money in the world. He has had all the recognition in the world. He can buy anything that he wants. He can go anywhere he wants. And after having all of that, happiness levels didn't change. Just because you can access everything or just because you can buy whatever, it didn't change how he was feeling inside because happiness never came from an amount of money. It never came from a relationship. It never came from a place. It came from within. If you think that happiness is, oh, when I get married, I'll be happy, or when I buy the big house, I'll be happy, just know that you're lying to yourself. Happiness begins right now. And a lot of times the things that we get in life come from our state of being in the present moment. Trying to be happy, find happiness, create happiness, create joy internally, maybe through some of the activities that you do, maybe doing some of the things that you love, communicating with the people you love, maybe that's a source of joy for you, but the actual happiness is up to you to create. Have you ever met people who are in horrible situations and they're just happy? They're just so joyful and you're like, I would have never known that this person is struggling with something so heavy because they're just such a good person. And they're so happy. That is a great example of happiness is not the materialization of the things around you. It's not, it's happiness is not a destination. Happiness is not the size of a house or there would be people who live in apartments who are miserable. Everyone who lives in an apartment would be miserable if happiness was a big house. Everyone who was single would be miserable if happiness was a relationship. And that's a hard pill to swallow because growing up, I always, I was that person. I was like, I'll be happy when, I'll be happy if I get this. When I'm married, I'll be happy. I'm having to rewrite the story in my life because happiness was never a place. It was never a destination. I remember when I came to California, I was like, I'll be happy when I have an apartment in California. I had the apartment in California and I still wasn't happy. I was searching for happiness somewhere else. So it was about overcoming that and really understanding that happiness is a state of being and it's something that I have to create every single day for myself and it'll only make the relationships better. It'll only make the success better. It'll only make everything that you're trying to do even that much better. The last thing, number 10, that I wish that I knew is to enjoy your life. That sounds so simple, 
but it's really not. Right now, especially in this day and age, we have so much pressure on us, pressure for success, pressure to be perfect, pressure to look perfect. But the biggest part about life is we have to enjoy it because life is the shortest and the longest thing that you're ever gonna do. It's really beautiful and it passes really quick. And the older you get, the more that you start to see that life is actually very short. So taking moments of joy and just enjoying life wherever you can, whether it's when you're drinking your cup of coffee, whether it's when you're on your morning walk, whether it's having a conversation with a stranger, enjoy the little moments. Try not to let that job that's stressing you out or that relationship that's irritating you or the siblings that you feel like you're butting heads with. Try not to let that steal your joy in life because there's so much to be happy about, especially when you have a roof over your head, if you have food in your mouth, you're one of the blessed ones. Finding joy in the little things that we do in life is so important and please start that as young as you can. So if you're in your early 20s and you're hearing this, please start finding joy in the smallest things, whether it's your community to work, whether it's watching the sunrise, whether it's getting up early and getting just that two hours of alone time from 5 a.m. to 7 a.m., whatever it may be, just find joy in the little things. That's it for today's episode. I am so happy that I got to share those with you and I hope that they really resonate or help someone who might be going through a difficult time. As always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on other socials to stay up to date with all the videos that I post. Also, feel free to comment any suggestions that you want for future videos. I appreciate you and I will see you on the next video. Mwah.